enough of that messing about, let's get into some more um, Undune 2. So, since I last played... It's a little out of my ears. Since I last played, there has been a massive update to the game. Um, a whole bunch of things were fixed, a whole bunch of things were added. Um, yeah, so I am going to continue on with my playthrough from, I think this is Mission 5? We get rocket tanks for the first time, so I'd be 6. So, let's... Let's get this underway. So, one thing that has been fixed, slash added, is uh, cost to repair structures. So in my first playthrough, I was just throwing down structures and then just repairing them because it cost nothing at the time. Um, now it is actually worth putting concrete down. Because structures do not repair for free anymore, which is fine. Uh, another thing that's been added is a pause icon. I actually suggested this um, to say whether or not something is still building. The volume for the uh, credits ticker is actually uh, a little bit uh, softer now. It was kind of greeting. Um, so thanks very much for that little change. I haven't actually played a ton of Dune 2 in the last um, uh, last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, I've been quite busy. Um, another fellow, another Aussie actually, has been doing a lot of Dune 2 speedrunning. Um, and he's actually completely blown apart a couple of my records, which is both great and frustrating. Great because it's really nice to see um, you know, other stuff happening in the community, other people trying to trying to run the game and all that sort of stuff. Um, but also, those are my records, so I'll be coming back for them sometime soon. I'm going to need a bit more concrete. <laughs> Can't put it there. We get two refineries up. So I have only played a couple of hours of this so far, but what seems to happen, especially in the early game, is that it takes a, quite a while for the enemy to notice you. So, definitely enough time to start building up a bit of an army. So I'm going to play this fairly casually. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speedrun it yet. Um, I may do a speedrun of this game. It's not going to be for a little while though. I want to finish the game first and then start fooling around with that. Let's get an outpost up. We're going to need more power for that. It's interesting that units still, when they're interacting with a structure, like a harvester going into a refinery, it still sort of happens along the top. It's not actually, it doesn't drive into the structure. Um, I'm not sure if that's a limitation of the platform or just, you know, something that can be fixed. Um, 10, not really sure what that means. Could be a little more obvious in terms of power requirements and things. This should be the first level that we actually get the starport, so... We don't yet. Something that has been added as well is, and this is another thing that I suggested, um, if you, so this is right clicking, if you right click on the radar and move it around, that works fine. If you deselect a unit, so press Z, you can left click and move it around like normal. But you can also select a unit, left click on the radar, and it starts moving there. So that's really great to have, especially if you're going to try moving 
a million different units. So let's power load build wind traps, okay. Let's give this a test. Okay. I'd have to measure, you know, from like 50% in time how long this takes and how much, you know, it actually drops down, but that is repairing very slowly, I would say. Which is fine. Um, it's just that would be a factor. That would. That is still repairing. So, this repairing is not going to be useful if you are getting attacked by anything. Um, or only if you're getting attacked by a very small, very low level unit, is a structure going to survive. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because in the original Dune 2, um, not only was the maths a bit screwed up for how fast certain things were repaired and how much it cost, um, for example, the heavy vehicle factory was insanely expensive and slow to repair. Um, but sometimes the brokenness went so far in the other direction that, for example, the, uh, the palace, the absolute end game structure, repaired for free. Which is obviously not, not intended. Okay, so interestingly, I can build everything, including the launcher, straight up. There's no structure upgrades. Uh, I'm going to hedge my bets a little and build some more harvesters, just to get them running around. High tech factory repair. No starport. Am I wrong? Maybe you don't get that yet. I don't remember exactly. Why is that green? That's just... Okay, that's just waste and putting concrete down there. But it doesn't check. It's only if... Okay, it doesn't actually care about whether there's rock or sand there. It, it'll let you place four bits of concrete right there. That's a bug. Um, what am I doing? I should actually play the game. More power down. Is that my... Yep, that's the third harvest already built. So, building units seems to happen really quickly. Or else I was just rambling for too long. Oh! Right-clicking, deselects. So you don't have to press Z. Yeah, okay. say 70. It's unclear whether that is... Is that the amount that... Is that, wait, is that the excess? Because it was 10 earlier with the one that I lost it. So let's... Let's build... Let's plonk down our repair facility. Is it just me, or is some of this spice not showing up? How does it? How does it show up? So the okay, so the light bits of spice I think show up as white. That's how that works. And the repair takes forever to build. Got a combat tank. Let's build a launcher. So something I did suggest was a noise when you give a unit a command, just as like a positive thing to say, yes, this is happening. Um, that I think is not actually doable due to a limitation of the system somehow. 50, okay, so I think this is like the excess. So each wind trap should be putting out 100, which means that I'm consuming 150 and it's giving me a float of like 50, that's fine. Okay. That 
That is so surprisingly so detailed for a tiny little pixel model, but I think it even includes a shadow. Yeah. That is beautiful. So let's put down a wall. So how does repairing work? So I can't just oh I can just tell it to go in. And it instantly pops out. Okay. Um I can't force fire a unit on another, so I can't test much more of that just yet. Ah, uh, so that's interesting. So having there's a bit of a complication of the control scheme there because let's just get the high tech up and running. Because normally, selecting a unit, then clicking on a structure, it selects the structure instead. Clicking on a unit, then clicking on the repair facility, tells it to go there. After a short moment. Yeah, there's a bit of a delay there. Interestingly, click, delay, start, click, start, okay. So there is a bit of a delay when telling it to do something that isn't normal, I guess. Uh, why am I not? Yeah, okay, so this is... Keeping an eye on what's actually doing stuff at any given time is a little difficult. So for example, I'm losing track of the fact that this is finished building stuff. So maybe if there was like a little icon or something, because like if, if sound can't be done, um, something visual, like the pause icon on building something. Um, something visual to help. Okay, cool, I clicked on that fast enough to see that drop from 15 to 10. I'm gonna want to start getting some turrets up now. That's interesting, can I place concrete on units? Yes. So that shouldn't be happening. Um, I should just be losing those bits of concrete. Um, that said, that is the Dune 2 behavior. I'm totally okay with this game doing something a little different there. Especially with how frustrating it can be. Um, not just with a, the small interface like this, but also generally with, you know, this game. It can be frustrating to micromanage stuff um, like that. So if I don't have to move units out of the way to place concrete, totally happy with that. Do they take any power at all? Turrets don't seem to be taking power. Yeah, these are still sitting in. Okay, so I think turrets do take a small amount of power. I think it's meant to be 10 for these little turrets and then 5 for a rocket turret. Uh, not 5, 25. Tech, I should be building carriers. So I have not left any room up here, or much room anyway, to build turrets. And I want to build turrets here to help defend this area. Um, because I missed when it happened in the first playthrough that I was doing. Interesting, so with the turrets, so okay, I've got a building selected, I've got a regular arrow mouse cursor here, if I click on a turret, I get the move icon. Like, like the game knows I can't tell a turret to move somewhere. Okay. 
So at the moment I'm kind of half playing the game, half just poking and prodding to see how this works. That is that is a carryall. Why didn't it bring that harvester back? I can't oh I can click it to select it. But that doesn't let me order it to do anything. Okay. So the slow movement, this reminds me a bit more of the way carryalls behaved in Dune 2000. They felt like bigger, slower, more ungainly beasts. Uh, okay, so I, I... Now I understand the relationship between Z and X. They are just mouse buttons, essentially. So if I hold Z... It's like I'm just clicking over and over and over. Oh, that is so cool. That is, yep, yeah, that is really sweet. Now let's get... Okay, so you can click on wall to see how damaged it is. Spice lost build silos. Okay, so what's happening here is I don't have enough storage to go above 3,000 credits. Uh, what that is doing, though, is highlighting something that I keep forgetting to mention about this. And that, uh, why is... I didn't notice this before. The, uh, the, the, the cross-hatching for this placement is going one pixel extra to the right or one pixel extra below. Was that happening with other stuff? Definitely happens with one by ones. Okay, it happens with everything. So the uh, the green cross hatching is going one pixel outside of the uh, outside of the actual area. All right, let's get some more silos up. So, back to what I was saying about two minutes ago. Um, the noise that is made by credits ticking up and down, uh, the volume of that has been lowered a bit. Thank you very much for that. Um, it was a bit loud, it was a bit overpowering, especially because you're continually hearing it. Um, something I wanted to mention though was that the way... Oh, I love how it, 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 it the, the altitude changes. It visibly goes up and down. That is such a sweet little detail. Um, I've just lost that train of thought again. Alright, the sound that this thing makes. The way June 2 handles it is that if you have about the same amount of credits going in and about the same amount of credits going out, like if you're building something and as you're refining, um, the actual ticking noise happens less frequently because it's a slower change over time. If that makes sense. Um, if you watch any any playthrough of Jutsu, you'll notice the, what's going on there. Now, something I forgot to think about was... In the original Dune 2, there is a bit of a limited range at which a harvester will go and search on its own for spice. I think in this game, they just go wherever, wherever the nearest spice is. And that is a really nice feature and really in line with the idea of my idea of this game, which is a very complex micromanagement game but that does a lot of stuff for you. It gets out of your way. So, for example, um, in the update video, you can actually see a better demonstration of this, but um, units actually go and they actually guard very aggressively. So they'll come out to 
I guess maybe about here to a tax link that's coming this way, and then they'll return. So that's really nice because it's... Okay, that's just enough... Just enough of a drain of power. I really feel like though I, I need to have put down more wind traps in this, and it's because because I've got so many turrets and they are just yeah. Now the reason I'm hiding this right at the back of the base is because of launcher uh, rocket tar uh, yeah launcher tanks. They're terrifying. Uh, at a glance, they are really powerful. As they should be. Um, I haven't really gotten a good look at how inaccurate they are, though. Yeah, okay, so this number is definitely the amount that you are above the demand. Um... Would that be better expressed as a fraction? Like, you know, 300 over 200 or something? I don't know. Like, this is fine. I guess this is all you really need, though. You've got 100 power in reserve. Let's keep building tanks. So there's no... Let's, let's start moving them out by radar. Let's start moving them out by radar. That happens really slowly. And inconsistently. Okay. For now, I might stick to moving stuff around just by manually clicking. Just because that feels a little... Um, not inaccurate. I'm sure that must be accurate. So let's click on... Let's get the center of this code well. Okay, this is another thing. Uh, because I'm trying to place it accurately, or very precisely, on the radar, um, it's difficult to see because the the cursor is not see through. So let's try. Okay, what happens if I click on the very edge? I get that. So the okay, so the dark blue edge around the radar. Is not part of the radar. It, that clicks through to through the map. So as a test, let's click on. Let's go two across and two down. So that should be on the very corner. That should be right here, I guess. This isn't a perfect one-to-one, -one, I've just realized, because the shape of this isn't accurate. And it's gone... okay. Okay, so I think the actual precise placement is a little off as well. But that's okay, it's... It's off in the original too. There, I tried clicking on this to build, and then it missed somehow. Okay, so clicking basically anywhere in this space up here that isn't on that icon will pause. And that that just okay. That was odd. I just clicked through that. Okay, it's inconsistent, but I can actually click through this window onto that. Not sure exactly what's going on there. So we've been going for a while. We've been building a lot of stuff. I feel like we should have been attacked by now. Right, another thing, because I'm losing so much spice, this this uh, text is just coming up continually. 
which makes it hard to see info about certain units. That's what's going on there. It's also a tiny bit jarring to see this is a nice rocky edge and then it's just absolutely flat here and it's flat here and it's completely flat here but then you've got this nice curve. I don't know the way that this map is drawn but there's something, something that feels a little unnatural there. I feel like I'm saying a lot of things that sound like criticism of this game. I love it. I love it to bits. This is a really good... It's a good little remake. It's 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 not the full game. I wouldn't call this a full remake of Dune 2, even though it is almost completely feature complete. It's a beautiful little tribute. It's super fun. And... I've just run out of words. Long story short, I love this. Everything that I'm saying is just a commentary based on having played the original for so long, and just picking out specifically the differences, how this feels different to that game. So a lot of what I'm saying is just picking out the differences, I'm not necessarily saying, oh, this is, you know, there, there aren't any game-breaking bugs, I haven't actually come across anything that stopped me from playing. Um, it's just little tweaks here and there, so all in all, it's a very well put together little game. And I'm going to need to build some more what? What is this? He's added in a unit cap. Oh. Oh, buddy. Okay. Yeah, this, this moving by radar is not consistent, unfortunately. The orders seem to happen, but it's... Yeah, it's inconsistent and slow. Do I have any more? I do have a few more launches. Do they move up? Leave some boys at home just in case we need. Yeah, now issuing commands is happening slowly. Sometimes. Seems to happen more when I've got more stuff moving around. Maybe it's to do with overloading the pathfinding algorithm or something. Something that basically paralyzes these units. I don't actually know where the enemy base is. I know it's up here somewhere. Why are they going up there? What are they driving around? That's about. Alright, we've got this quad. Let's do a scouting run. You come down here. Why aren't you? Oh. That felt unnecessarily harsh. Okay, so rocket launchers seem to work at a very short range. Holy crap, this is a lot of units here. Um, 
So I'm not really telling anything to happen here. This is all just... Yeah, they're firing very accurately from very short range. Wow, these are deadly. Okay, when I short, say short range, it's only about four or five squares. Now this is a damaged unit. I have carryalls, and I have a repair facility. Why aren't they coming and getting my units? I don't have to manually tell them to do this, do I? No, I can't. Alright, let's move in. Yeah, so they go and attack things and then they just go back. I, I like that. Um, a lot has happened already in this base attack, but I haven't had to do all that much. Okay, he's not attacking that by default. So still something not quite right there. Did he just decide on... Did I click on that? Did I tell him to do that or did he just decide on his own? Whoa, that is a lot of... Why did he take that part? We're seeing, I think, a few little limitations of so much going on at once. Now they've decided to... Yep, yeah, okay. So it kind of works, but it's very slow to happen. So they, they took a little while to decide they were going to come down and attack that. And now they're going to go back as if they're guarding. It's not quite right. Again, the lovely screen shake. So the fire... That is a heavy trooper. The fire for these guys looks way bigger than it maybe should. Given how... Like, it, the, the, the sprite for their attack is about the same size as these guys. And that kind of makes sense, because they are also a missile kind of attack. Ah, that poor harvester. So he just sort of automatically went back to... where the refinery was. Another thing that just happened there that would have happened in the original but didn't happen here is that that harvester was 100% full. This area should be chock full of spice because it normally blows up out of the harvester. Maybe it didn't happen because he was on rock and the detection doesn't happen quite that well. Okay, I don't know how this guy is surviving these direct hits. Oh, uh, because they're not direct hits, they're flat out missing sometimes. Okay. It took a long time to decide to... No, don't go over there, you'll get destroyed. wasn't guarding. That took him a long time to decide he was going to do something about that. Yeah, so I think it's just a concurrency thing.
Yeah, the spice lost build silos thing. I, something different needs to happen there. Um. Because it's kind of... Yeah, because it, it, it's taking over this little thing. Um, in the original, that would just be a very occasional sort of pop-up. So something else I'm noticing is that there's a lot um, of infantry that appear when a building is destroyed. Um, they all appear to be at full health when they appear. And they're appearing in every single square. Um, Dune 2 would randomize it for a structure as yeah. For a structure with like six spaces, there'd be maybe somewhere between one and three, I think, is about the number. And then the, the fastest way to deal with these would be to just drive over them all, but there's no way to command my tanks to do that. So I tell them to go... That's very strange. He's driving around that guy, rather than actually attacking him. Not to mention, these are rocket tanks. These should be absolute death for these soldiers. So something I'm worrying about here a little bit. Oh wow, that turret. Those turrets were not firing until they discovered my unit. This tank is also moving very slowly on concrete, is it? Yeah, so light tracked vehicles drive much faster on concrete in the original. That's Harvesters if they're below 50%, combat tanks, rocket launchers, and sonic tanks. And deviators for that matter. So maybe that could be a thing. So it should count the game as done when I destroy that outpost. It shouldn't require the turrets to go down. Oh no, there's another structure. Two more structures. Okay, there's a whole other bit of the base down here. Okay, so telling him to drive over, giving him a, a, a target point on the other side of the infantry made him drive over it, that, that, that part works fine. Maybe it is worth getting rid of these. So at no point have they come and attacked, like, I guess I wouldn't notice. Okay. So he's dropping a guy in. That's the first time I've seen that happen, though. I want to just hold that guy to go in again. So interesting that the little, uh, the garage door flashes. Um, but there's no... There could be a pop-up here that tells me what unit it is and how repaired it is. Can't tell if the enemy was repairing that. Hmm. 
I think the infantry dying noise just got cut off a little bit by the change in music. That's probably just a Pico 8 limitation thing. And is totally fine. Um. So my next thought is about the, uh, the launchers. They seem really deadly. The way regular Dune 2 plays is, especially for this mission, you need a contingent of combat tanks to escort the launchers to the enemy base. Because they are completely defenseless from, you know, short range stuff. Um, what seems to be happening here is that my three launchers here... Maybe I can finish the mission with just these three very damaged units. If they would just do what they're told. Okay, not sure what that was about. They're moving now. Are you attacking? What is going on? Infantry should be making little enough difference that I should be able to take out the rest of this base without even really thinking about them. Ah! That was interesting, did it just... So I tell him to... Okay, I don't know what's going on here. I tell this guy to move into the repair. He gets picked up by a carryall. Or doesn't get picked up by it, and then... Okay, so it, it, it's not taking the sprite off the battlefield. the strange thing that's going on there. Okay. And then annoyingly, because I hadn't... Yeah, some strange logic going on with the, uh, the carryalls. Alright, let's kill this last structure and move on to the next one. Don't know why it has to be that close, but okay. Yes. It is just the structures and not the uh, turrets. This is the Siege Tech mission. I'm moving units out of the way just because I'm used to doing that. Oh, I even know which map this is. There's an enemy base up here and another one up here. I'm very familiar with this particular layer.
So I think with the carryalls of the repair facility, I think your unit just has to be very damaged uh, for it to be picked up and taken away and repaired. Because it was definitely happening, um, but not to units that were, you know, 50% in the in the yellow or even some in the red. Um, I think they just had to be damageable or a very a very low amount um, for them to be picked up for repair. Something that I would suggest. Especially for especially for Undune 2. Is a lot of the stuff that we do when we play Dune 2, like I, I speedrun Dune 2. Um and there's a lot of little things, a lot of little tricks that you have to do to make the game work and, and run in the way that and behave in the way that you really want it to. Um and one of those things is completely surrounding your repair facility with units and structures to sort of plug the gap um, so that they don't just drive out. So for example, the most useful thing for for, for that to work, way for that to work rather, is for a carryall to come, pick up a damaged unit, take it to the repair facility, get it repaired, bring it back to the battlefield, and then continue on. Um, the way this is programmed at the moment is exactly the same as in Dune 2, where you still have to you have to surround the, re the repair facility so that that automatic thing happens. Um, something I'd really like to see in this game is that happening automatically, regardless, because it, it happens with the uh, the refineries. Carriers come and you know do that automatically. Why can't they just do it automatically with the repair facility? That's what I'd like to see. It is a bit of a departure from the way that Dune 2 itself, the, the original, works. Um, but this game, Undune, doesn't have to be Dune 2. It doesn't have to, you know, emulate the frustrations. Okay, so clicking close in this particular spot then clicks on the radar. Like it doesn't separate this click from this click. Another potential change. So the way I normally play this map, I build sort of pontoons of rocket turrets all the way up here and then another one out about here to defend from the two bases. I wonder how necessary that's going to be, since they didn't attack my base at all in the last one. There were no sneak attacks. Or if there were, I just plain didn't notice them. Uh... Okay, you can tell this is a really good remake of Dune 2 because I'm getting the same analysis paralysis from trying to plan out my base. Uh, next up, we're gonna need light vehicle factory. That can go here. Um, heavy factory can go here, repair can go here, and the other stuff around it. Yeah, it, it perfectly emulates the desperation, especially in sort of this this mid to late stage of the game, in trying to plan out where everything is and should go. Put that there. Yep, there goes the radar. Is this the starport level? Where is the starport? There is the starport. Order and receive shipments from Chome. Hmm. 
me a profit targets. Um, this dialogue could also mention the power usage. That's something that uh, the original doesn't do, but this game could. And that'd be a big boon as well. Um, what am I building next? Let's just build that. Because I don't know exactly how the starport behaves, I'm not going to build that just yet. I'm going to play this traditionally and just get some defensive units out there, just in case I do get attacked. I don't really need to explore all of this, it's just nice to see. And again, there's no there's no upgrading, we could just build siege tanks straight away. Interesting how there's the different colour of sky in some of these. Um, it'd be interesting to see as we go along whether that's just because these are the more powerful units, or it's just, I suppose. I don't know, maybe maybe the actual artwork for these two units was darker. with me just a second. Okay. So just as an ease of use thing, um, Pico 8 is very possessive about uh, your mouse cursor and mouse control. Um, the best thing to do, because, like for example, if I alt tab out of something now, out of this, and to try to focus another application, Undune still has the mouse control. It's very grippy. Um, what you can do though is you press Escape to bring up the actual menu, and at that point you can see my mouse cursor is actually available outside of uh, outside of Undune. So, three harvesters was definitely enough last time, so let's get moving on sieges already. That's a misclick. Which is embarrassing because this mouse I've actually bought specifically to play Dune 2. And I shouldn't be misclicking at all. Very embarrassing. Uh, I bought this specifically because my usual mouse. Um, I usually use a 3D connection CAD mouse. It's a really nice sort of three button mouse. It's really comfortable to use. It's really ergonomic. Um, but it is definitely not a gaming mouse. Let's get some rocket turrets up. So the, the software for this mouse, you can you can change the uh, the DPI. The, oh, that is such a beautiful looking unit. Look at that. That little group of pixels, you know, means business. That is a massive turret. So yeah, the uh, the sensitivity of this mouse you can adjust in very fine little increments. So the the way that I've tuned this is exactly how I want Dune 2 to feel um, when running on a screen with a lower resolution, the way that this is right now. Yeah, the rock has a very sharp edge, uh, the mountain rather. Some of it doesn't. It's... I don't, I don't know what's causing that. And again, not a major complaint, it's just... It's 
so why it, it's hard to tell exactly which way these are pointed but this one looks like it's pointing that way they are still pointing maybe that way can they see something that would be within their range but they're not firing on because it's not visible Looks like it's pointing outward as well. Why? I don't. It, it, it's hard to tell without making these move around and rotate and see which end is meant to be which. Um, so it's a little hard to tell where they're actually facing. I mean, it probably doesn't matter too much because I guess the turrets they do everything automatically. Um, but that's probably the first instance of something in this, in Unjunsu that I've seen where it's difficult to tell because of the low resolution what something is and what it's doing. This is the first time I've sort of encountered that. Yeah, by this time I should be getting attacked by things, I'm pretty sure. Oh. So the question is, the strategy for this mission. Um, launches are definitely deadly, and to the point where a flock of them would be more useful than a flock of combat tanks. So I don't really need combat tanks, they kind of become obsolete. But it'll be interesting to see the uh, power dynamic between siege tanks and the launchers. See what we actually need to do. Okay, let's get a starport up. Instead of selecting the wind trap. Oh no! That was a weird sequence of events because I definitely saw the crosshatch show up to show that I was about to place concrete there, but then it selected okay that makes sense never mind okay let's get this starboard up okay. I like that the that this is this is instant just click 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 and it's done um, which sounds really obvious, but in the original Dune 2, there is a bit of a lag time. It, it takes like half a second to switch between uh, menu items, and I really don't like that. So that's, that's another thing where this game is nicer in feel than the original. Get this starport down. How are we doing for power? Let's do it. Okay. Something is definitely not quite right with the power usage for this base because the starport takes 80 power and these only output 100. So, even ignoring the fact that the rocket turrets, that the turrets aren't taking power, and they should, some other stuff is also not taking power. Let's take a look at the starport and see what we can buy. Trike, quad, combat tank, siege tank. Okay, a couple of observations here. One is that this list is not ordered the same way. For example, heavy factory, combat tank, siege tank, launcher, harvester MCV. Okay, maybe it is loaded the same way. But trikes and quads should be appearing at the bottom of the list. Or at least they would in Dune 2. 
Um, maybe it makes sense to have the lighter stuff appear at the top? It's not ordered by price, so I don't know. Okay, another observation. The prices are all what they are to actually build the same units. So for the moment, it doesn't look like there's a real... Why does it say build? Okay, we'll play with that later. Actually, no, we're not. I'm gonna try... Okay, so we, we click build and we get a build animation. So it's only one unit of design. So is this just another production facility? Is that how this works? Why? I don't know why that paused. It was interesting. Yeah, okay, so it's just... It's just another production facility at the moment, and it's got a little build animation. So there's no... Why is that pause? Did I pause that? What's going on there? So there's no giant frigate, space frigate, that comes along and drops units off. It looks like it just acts as like another build facility. Um, which might be a limitation of the platform. It's not exactly how it should work. Especially with the prices not changing. So, Dune 2 Starport Logic is... Prices are basically random between about half and double. So for example, a combat tank might be... It's actually a little bit less than half, so they might be down to about 120, I think, is the lowest. And up to about 450. I also can't build uh, by carryalls, so we still have to build... a high tech. So yeah, carryalls are missing from the uh, starport. So maybe this is just an early implementation of the starport, but what that means is that for the moment it's actually a cheaper factory. Like I think we need a, a light factory place to, in order to build the starport. But we don't need the heavy factory, because this can build everything. So I'm not hedging my bets, uh, hedging my bets on the way... Ah, oh, minus 15, okay. I'm not hedging my bets on the way that... Siege tanks and rocket tanks work. I'm going to bet that siege tanks are just simply more powerful. I could be wrong. And this could go horribly, but... What's going on with the radar there? I do not have... There is there is an unbroken line of structures here. I don't know why there's those, like, those vertical gaps. Oh well. Let's pop that there. Let's get the repair down. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see just the repair just 100% automatic, no matter what units are around. Um, it does make sense to have units that you tell it to go there manually to drive in. But maybe you don't even need that. Because in any level that you've got the repair, you, you're going to have... Uh, except, I think except for the first one. The first mission where you get the repair, I don't think you have... Oh, maybe you do. No, you do, because you get a high-tech the same thing. Okay. If this were my game, what I would do is make the repair facility entirely automatic. If you have a carry-all, he comes and drops it in, and then it 
once it's repaired, it picks it back up again and takes it straight back to where it was. Um, no manually driving in. Just make it give it give it a helipad essentially. Make it just a, an air structure so that it has to work with the high tech. That is what I would do. It is a bit of a uh, a departure from the way Dune 2 traditionally works. I get that. Um, but if I was making this game myself, that is what I would do. So another thought I had uh, in my downtime about the radar. So he's going to drive basically behind the radar here. And I dare not let him stop behind the radar or else I'll never be able to select him again. What I was thinking was maybe the map could scroll a little bit further past the radar. So the bottom of the so the bottom of the map down here, so that it comes to about here, so that you can still interact with the radar. Um, I don't know how difficult that would be to program. Um, hearing that, Paul is probably cringing in his seat, thinking, "Oh no, I'd have to redefine the the map boundaries and all kinds of other stuff." So. I don't know. And it is a very niche edge case. Um, I think one of the earlier missions had an enemy base sort of about here, so it was a little annoying and in the way. Um, but overall, not a massive issue. Right, I'm getting a bit nervous about my harvesters being up here, so I'm going to tell some of them to come down here. Because we're getting into... I'm scouting into enemy base territory here. Now, I have definitely not had an ambush attack yet. So the enemy AI in this game is, it appears not to be set up for that just yet. Um, something kind of cute that I'm noticing here, clicking and moving this quad around. So if I click here, and then again, it's possible to issue enough commands at one go that he kind of basically drives, yeah, drives to the edge of the, uh, the fog of war. Um, so it doesn't register that he's moved a square across, so he ends up discovering essentially two places worth of, um, fog of war around. Ooh, what is that? We have an enemy harvester. Who is at 100% and is driving home. Does the enemy not have carryalls? That's interesting. Yeah, the effect of that, that, that reminds me a lot of, um, you could do exactly the same thing with soldiers in the original Command and Conquer. And maybe the original Red Alert. Probably since it was mostly the same engine. Um, so interestingly, you've recreated an interesting bit of emergent behavior from a later game. Yeah, I was placing silos. So now, because my because my repair facility is going to be completely surrounded, it is going to act. It is going to work completely automatically. And I'm just going to build a ton of these. I hope air units are not counted in the unit cap. Another sort of, if this my game thing, um, that little quad, I just ordered him to move along the bottom to sort of wipe out the 
excuse me, the extra bits of fog of war that were off the edge of the map, I would just make them not exist. I would... It really makes no difference if you haven't gone right to the edge of the map. So I would just make that, that just sort of automatic. So like, at this point, I would just get rid of those. This is the way that Dune 2 does it. I think Command and Conquer is a little smarter around it. Oh. Interesting that they've ended up on slightly different pixel levels there. Alright, let's test out. Let's see what a siege tank can do. It is very slow. Here comes my carryall. Picks up nothing. But he's still gonna fly. Okay, no. Cool. So the only suggestion I have there is to have carryalls, as they do in Dune 2, recognize when what they're trying to do is futile and just break off what they're doing. Alright, I'm not super impressed with the way that the siege tank was destroying things. It did very well against the quad, but then did almost no damage to, or well not almost no damage, did about half damage to the combat tank, but it should have done more. So, I'm going to hedge my bets the other way now, and stack up on, why does that show paused? That's... Is that because I've just told one to build here, and then that's somehow conflicted with that? Who knows? Oh, now they're coming. Okay. Rocket turrets are good. Because I've, I've now discovered the enemy base a bit, they're going to attack me. So now we have to be careful. What I'm going to start doing though... Selling these tanks, slowly. Let's move to the top of the screen. Because the way this map is arranged is that the there's two construction yards. One is at the top corner here, and the other is up here. Okay, I love that you can now select structures that are partially hidden. That's really good. Um, what the original game does, though, is show the rest of the, uh, the hard outline, the white outline of the yard structure. Which I think would look nicer. Alright, let's break off this bunch. Okay, in the original game, six siege tanks is about fine to do this. I think they'd be able to brute force what I'm trying to do.
Okay, they made mincemeat out of that launcher. Okay, cool. So even even in the original map, that is a cannon turret, not a rocket turret. That is a nice little detail. Okay, they do a fair bit of damage to structures. Yeah, the fact that trooper fire looks the same as rocket turret fire is... <gasps> the worm has just eaten one of my tanks. And another one. Yeah, it's... so that's three. That's four. So does the worm go away at any point? Oh no, my units are walking onto the sand when there's a sandworm there. as strong as I thought. Why did they start by driving south when I've told them to go east? Yeah, pathfinding in this game is cool. Alright, let's try assaulting this turret through the wall. Uh, it's just eating all my tanks. Are they? They're firing over the top of the tower uh, of the wall. That's good. Being very cautious of the sand. So despite having two construction yards, they are not rebuilding structures. I wonder if that's just not programmed in yet. <gasps> What's going on here? Okay, good, the turrets are dealing with their thing. They're doing their thing wrong. Yeah, the the interface is nice having the little windows pop up over things, but it's becoming a little problematic. Still loving the, the screen shake. Here's the, here's the construction yard. I like that it deselects the unit after you've told it to do something. That kind of mitigates the issue of the uh, thing popping up over the top. Yep, first enemy siege tank. Okay, I'm happy enough with the way that the siege tanks work that I don't think I need launchers at this point. Which is kind of a shame, but it's 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 a difficult balancing act. For sure. But that rocket turret has a okay, no it is firing. Okay, so this guy, I would assume he he would be getting picked up for repair. Of, 
here is the repair. Okay, the thing that I was worried about, which is micromanagement of a ton of units, isn't such a burden in this that it, as I thought it might be. Partly because these units are moving so slowly, that the pace of the action is such that this is this is okay. You've even replicated having the uh, high tech facility off the edge of the map. That's that's a great little adaptation. Yeah, I'm I'm deeply impressed at the detail in the reproduction of this map. Except that there is now a unit off the screen. Okay. Maybe that happened in the original as well? Alright, that's one side of the map done. Let's get these guys on the move. So if I tell... I had two damage tanks up here. Maybe one's already been brought down and repaired. So if I tell this guy to go get repaired, he doesn't move. Is a carry all coming? Yes. Let's see what happens here. He gets picked up and he's getting repaired. I love the flashing lights. That's just... That's a beautiful detail. There really does need to be some kind of progress bar, though. That is taking a long time to repair. Units were much quicker to, uh, to repair in the original. And you see it just popped out there. Yeah, okay. See, how am I, how's my stuff holding up? Nothing actually needs repair, so it doesn't look like at any point the enemy has hit any structures. And because everything's firing over every other unit, nothing is, for example, like if, um, if this siege tank was here, and this was an enemy unit. Okay, so he's a little damaged, that's fine. Um, if he was attacking this unit, he would be shooting straight through the turrets and damaging them. That's not happening. Good. I like that. So just to double check this. So we tell him to repair, and a carrier comes, picks him up. Drops him off. He's a quad, so he should be very quick and cheap to repair. Okay, so he just pops out of the nearest empty space, yeah. So, the feature in Dune 2 with tanks getting repaired and taken back to where they were, that's not a thing. Carriels are only working one way at the moment. Which is fine. That's very fine. Let's add some launchers into this mix. Um, go on. going on here. Okay, somehow I had two harvesters stacked in a refinery. Not sure what's going on there. <clears throat> so, an observation I've just had 
how I've barely noticed the music. There's been music playing throughout all of this, and it's just... It's not that it's blended into the background as such, it's just that it's more... It feels, it feels natural enough, but I'm not bothered by it. Which is not the right way to explain the, what I'm actually thinking in my head, but... It's just such a natural reproduction of the original music that it just feels right. That's what I wanted to say. It feels right. So the balance of these units, I think... I think launchers can still do more damage than a siege tank per shot, but they're definitely weaker. So I think, I think in the previous mission, when you have combat tanks and launchers, it makes no sense to have com to use combat tanks. Oh, buddy, you picked the wrong neighborhood. Um, but Siege Tanks, I think, are powerful enough to actually complement the power of rocket launchers, rather than just be overridden by them. What I'm saying is there appears to have to be value in still using both. Okay, this is super satisfying. I wish I could see more of what's going on. Um, I'm gonna have to try and explain what I mean by that. The view distances for more expensive units should be larger. That's interesting, there was only a relatively smaller amount of units in that building. Which is good. Um, yeah, I don't feel like these units are seeing far enough. Like, I think every unit at the moment has has the same uh, vis uh, visual distance. I think that's how this is working at the moment. This is very satisfying, though, I have to say. Um, it does feel a little, a little bit like herding cats. Maybe the guarding distance could be a little lower? Like the radius at which a unit detects and guards an area could be a little smaller? Because there, there have been a few moments in this assault particularly where it's felt like I'm herding cats. And units are doing a little too much of stuff on their own. And I think that was a little music glitch there, where it wanted to go back to the regular ambience track and it did for like a split second like I heard one note of it and then it went back to the attack one so it's not maybe it could detect more fluidly what track it should play next because um, probably one of the biggest complaints I would have about the original Dune 2 is the way that the music ha was handled um, it's very simple it's like it plays the ambient track unless there's something being attacked at the moment and then it goes back to the regular one. This, this game could do it a little smarter. It doesn't need to do the fancy thing where it plays like, you know, it doesn't have to gauge 
the amount of stuff that's happening on screen and then raise and lower the, the tempo and it doesn't have to be that adaptive um but this is an opportunity to do a little better than what dune 2 did battle goes well but there is no time to relax we're going back against the harkonnens for this one no it is autos no you're right yep 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 it is autos Doesn't he say good luck at the end of that message? I could be wrong. Okay, this is going to be the interesting one. Because this is... This is where we get Sonic Tanks. We're also up against Autos, which means they have Deviator Tanks. Um... This is gonna hurt. So, wind trap here, refinery here. Maybe a second refinery there. Is there a separate volume control for the music? No. Because now that I think about it, the music might be a little loud if there's quiet bits. Like, like just right here, I can mostly hear the music. And it's a little, a little overpowering. So I don't know, maybe you could just go crazy and uh, have music that swells and, you know, waxes and wanes and stuff changes, I don't know. That would be cool. But again, hard to... hard to balance that against staying true to the original tracks, I guess. By the way, this is fine, this is great. Um, that's gonna be space for a starport. Keep on with the original, with the usual strategy. Let's let's use two refineries. Let's see how we go. I don't know if harvesters will go and find off. You know, if, if I hadn't discovered this, would a harvester come and take it? Once this had been exhausted and this and all of that. Um, okay. So that should not be at half health. That had... That should be... If you divide this into three, that should be about here. So missing one square of concrete seems to spawn a structure at 50% health. That's It's not quite the way it should be. Um, yeah, maybe message me about that, because I've got a few... There's a lot of... Why aren't you... Okay, it had to finish... It had to finish driving into a square to actually discover that little bit. That was weird. Um, yeah, I've in my head I've got all like the little the ratios of stuff and yeah, maybe you messaged me about that at some point. How are we doing for power? Still pretty good. I feel like I think the refineries aren't taking enough power. Get a light factory down. Because I can't remember what what let us build the stuff, or whether it was the light factory or the heavy factory. And I can't remember exactly definitively in the original game, but I'm pretty sure you can build a starport if you've built an outpost. 
So maybe another small tech tree adjustment there. The other thing the starport does in the original game is some stuff occasionally goes out of stock entirely. So rather than being just another production structure, maybe stuff could just be randomly unavailable. Can we build starport now? Yes we can. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's hinging off the wrong structure in the tech tree. I'm going to build it here, missing one bit of concrete, just to verify what I think I saw with uh, this refinery. So this would be a good test. So we're currently 10 behind on power. Let's place this. What was that? That wasn't there before. I think that was a reinforcement drop. <sighs> That's an ornithopter. But it's not firing. Um, okay, I have to get some rocket turrets down. That, if that is an ornithopter, that is way too early. Okay, that's what I expected to see in there. Okay, that is definitely an ornithopter. That it's not actually firing on anything. So that went to minus sixty. That was it. Minus 10? So that's only taking 50 power instead of 80. So that is definitely an ornithopter. That is out way too early, but it's not attacking anything of mine, and my rocket turrets aren't firing back at it. Oh no, he's now going for my... So he is firing on structures. and was clearly targeting units, but not actually firing on them. I'm not sure what that's about. And I think some of these moved around, so the... Okay. Confused about the logic there. Do I need to discover more space around them? Where did my quad go? Come down here and scout. Um, what's next? More power. There's no notification yet about an ornithopter attacking your base, so I'm just going to have to keep a, uh, a close eye out. I think with the way repair facilities work at the moment, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to build one. Um, it's not 
useful enough yet to bother building. Right, yeah, so structures, turrets are not seen as, so I click on this, I get not just the arrow, but the, uh, the, the white border around it. These, I get like a unit reticle. So these somehow, they're, they're kind of like a, I'm guessing they're just placed as units with like zero speed or something. And that for some reason you can't command. I bet that's how those are programmed. Except they also they also take damage if you place them on rock rather than concrete. Some weird kind of hybrid. All right. What was that noise? I don't know what that noise was. Right. Let's get on. Where's the X? Does it not appear until I've got a heavy factory? Because it should appear at the same time as the starport. George, excuse me. And interesting, now that I've blocked off the top of the uh, refinery, he's driving to the nearest available square directly north of the pad and just glitching in. I guess it works. Um, I need to get some um, carryalls out. Speed up the uh, refinery. all was expected. Give me the House of X. Maybe it was there before, but I'm expecting it to be near the top because it should be in Dune 2 in the original. It's about, it's around near, near the top of the list. But yeah, because there's no uh, Mentat sort of view of structures and the description of them, I really think having power use here as well would be really good. Uh, I don't actually have a really smart place to put that yet, so I'm going to pop it up here. And that starts as paused, and significantly into it. Right, so he drives to there to pop in, that's interesting. So once this is placed, we should start being able to build Sonic tanks out of here. The starport should remain unchanged. it appears right down the bottom. Um, if that was at the top, that'd be slightly better, but maybe. Hopefully it's not appeared in the starport. It hasn't. Excellent. So now we can start building those. Um, is that really all we need? Let's get another heavy factory down so we can really pump out the uh, Sonics. So we'll get a high tech out first. 
we'll pop that there as like a defensive. Okay, that's the first actual enemy unit attack that I've seen. Hopefully these are far enough forward to defend against stuff, because it's... Stuff should start attacking the heavy factory at this point. That would be the the, uh, the original game's behavior. Ah. Oh, I can, uh, of course, because I've got the House of X, I can build Ornithopters myself now. Um, we'll wait a bit before trying that. Um, a little more urgent, I think, is going to be some more rocket turrets. So, my absolute split second reaction to see the Sonic tank was, gee, there's not a lot of blue on there. There should be some more blue, but... I think because of the super recognizable, because like anyone... Anyone who's played the original Dune 2 is going to look at that. If you ask them what unit is this, they're going to look at it and go, oh, it's got the giant, you know, yellow dish on the front. That's a Sonic tank. So... Okay, they're really not playing games. He was going after that refinery. That was my first. That was my first refinery. They're targeting that. So I assume I assume deviators are gonna work the way that they do in the original game. I'm a little less sure about how Sonic Tanks and Devastators are gonna work. Because the the way that those two units are split in the original game is that the Sonic Tank was like the um, a glass cannon. It's very powerful but it gets destroyed easily. Whereas the- and it's, it moves fairly quickly. Um, whereas the Devastator was the biggest, heaviest, most armoured tank in the game, and it had a very powerful weapon, but it was slow, and could be outmaneuvered fairly easily. I'm not penalised on power for building all these rocket turrets, so I'm just going to build a ton of them. So the question is, the the differentiation between them, aside from glass cannon versus, I don't know, huge stonker tank, um, is that Sonic tanks, when they fire, they destroy, they damage everything in the firing path and have a very long range. They have the same range as uh, launchers do. So the range has clearly been nerfed. They're definitely very powerful tanks. They took care of that unit very quickly. So I, I, what I'm saying is it'll be interesting to see how they behave against Devastators, which we'll see in the next mission. Uh, this one though, I'm just going to build a flight of Sonic tanks and just drive down with them. With that in mind though, I'm... I'm not getting near my spice cap. Um, 
I'm actually building stuff fast enough to not make use of it. Cool. Alright, let's get both of those churning those out. Um, Bunsies, let's grab another harvester, I guess. I just have a whole lot of stuff happening at once. Let's build an order doctor and see what it does. So the way Ornithopters worked in the original game is they just... Basically the way that the uh, the Autos one was, was working, it just picks a target and just goes after it. Flies around really quickly. Um, it only gets targeted by rocket turrets. In the original game, I think sometimes launchers and sometimes troopers also got a shot at it. But the only definitive way to kill one easily is with a bunch of rocket turrets. So as with the repair, if I tell one of these guys to go back, yeah, he who sits instantly picked up. Okay, cool, so everything automatically resumed building once I had money again. Kind of. That's not the way the original game worked. In the original game, I would have had to go back to these four production facilities and just click to resume. What is that? Oh, it's a Sonic tank. What is my little water up to doing? So does he only attack stuff that I can see? Let's let's go see some stuff. Well, <laughs> I really like the way that the rocket turrets work. In that they automatically just rotate smoothly rather than just, you know, by the eight different directions. The result of which is that you can't, you can't avoid a rocket turret by driving past it fast enough like quads do. Because that was always a bit silly. It was very useful if you wanted to scout. But yeah, that is uh, that is what should happen to a quad that runs around scouting. It should just be, you know, there's a rocket turret, siege tank, and a launcher skulking around somewhere. That is exactly what should have happened to that guy. Um, that was a light scout unit that just got creamed. So I can click on... I can click on carryalls. I can't click on... Oh, I can click on the Ornithopter. It's just very difficult to do so. You also can't command it to do stuff. It's entirely an automatic unit, which it should be. So the enemy attacks from, from their base to mine happen very slowly, it seems. Like, there's only like one unit every few minutes. It's not a particularly... ...scary thing, I'll put it that way. Get some more silos down. 
that even need concrete for these babies. Oh, it's getting annihilated. That's about what I'd expect. Alright, we're not holding back. Let's just go up to this. What is this? Okay, it is really nice that damage units sort of basically retreat. I think what's happened is that all these guys were built and told to attack my base, but they've just kind of gotten clumped up. Yeah, these guys are absolutely devastating. Why though is my Ornithopter attacking the wall? That's not really useful. Like, clearly he's just going for the, the nearest target. <laughs> yeah, okay, so the enemies do not have carryalls. So their harvesters are, shall we say, uniquely vulnerable. What? Um, I guess it's worth mentioning that in the original, the Ornithopters never went after walls. They went after... ...really high value stuff, like... I would expect my Ornithopter to be prioritizing that. Did he just stop doing what I told him to do to attack that unit? So he's just driven, driven back. Can you, yeah, attack those guys. So, I'm not sure what to recommend to better balance... ...slotting tanks. They should be doing damage to everything that they hit, except for other... I mean, everything in the line of fire, except each other. Um, they're risky for base defense because they do overfire and they do destroy your own structures. But not knowing the limitations of the system, I'm not really sure what to suggest. So my Ornithopter doesn't seem to be getting attacked by anything, so I'm just going to start building a ton of those and just see how they behave. Let's bring these guys over here. I mean, probably what I'll see from that is just Ornithopters eating away at this patch of wall. He's driving to it rather than actually attacking it. Yeah, all their units got clumped up here.
Yeah, sometimes when I'm clicking, they're not attacking. It's not registering as an attack command, it's... Okay, cool. One of my autothopters just broke through that bit of wall. Can they run over troops in this? Yes, they can. Um, it's just a little delicate because... You can't... There's no differentiation between telling a unit to move and telling it to attack. It's, 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 it's like CNC, where you tell a unit to go somewhere, and if there's an enemy unit there, it attacks. Or if it's clear space, it just drives there. So it does happen, it's just a little awkward to get it to happen intentionally. And especially with a damage structure producing an entire field of enemy soldiers, as you'll see in a moment here, you kind of have to... Yeah, even then, it's... it's, it's... It can happen, but for some reason it's difficult to get to happen on purpose. Oh, my autothopters are slowly chewing away at this wall. <laughs> they seem really useful, more useful than in the original game. Uh, okay, so there's more base down here. I'm gonna pull these, pull these guys back a bit. Oh, interesting. Because we've discovered this now, they're all. Um, I think he deserved that. Okay, I'm finding it difficult to meaningfully pull these guys back from the attack face. From the call face, I guess. So yeah, I think the, the guarding just collecting broken uh, sonic tanks here. Yeah, the logic for um, aggressively guarding an area, I think the area for that needs to be reduced a bit. I still have both of my ornithopters. Alright, the enemy is not rebuilding units, um, not rebuilding structures, and it's not repairing them either, as far as I can tell. Maybe those will be in the next update. Uh, maybe I should just build another repair, or build a repair. And I still love the screen shake when a structure goes up. Maybe we don't need the screen shake for uh, walls going up? Wait, was that rebuild? I feel like that was more damaged earlier. I could be wrong. Alright, so I'm going to repair these two, keep building up a few more units. Gonna pop a repair facility here and then we'll go and assault the rest of that base. And in fact, I've got the money. Let's just build more on top of the They're fun. And now we haven't hit the unit cap in this mission like we did with the, uh, the one a few goes ago. Not totally sure what's different. I mean, obviously, obviously, less units is what's different, but some. 
I wonder if the power output changes for a wind trap if it's damaged. It does in the original. This would be a good uh, a good first test. Yeah, there's some strange concurrency things going on with uh, the repair facility and telling units to go in there. You can repair the repair while repairing a unit though. Yep, so it looks like wind traps put out 100 power no matter what. Is my reading of that situation. Okay, I can tell this guy to repair, so he'll get picked up. <clears throat> tell these guys to come back down here. I already have way more units than I actually need to do this, but this is just... this is fun. I kind of wish the sprite for walls was a bit... Maybe maybe plainer, maybe just like... Maybe just make it look like a, uh, a regular bit of concrete. But like a lighter colour or something. Because um, I, I glanced in here and thought, oh, that bit of wall is damaged. But no, it's actually a rocket turret. goes down here. Right, so the rocket turrets know there's stuff happening and sort of turn so that they're ready to fire the moment it comes into range. That's a good... That's a good way around for this to work. Let's get these units out of the way. Yeah, sometimes when I'm clicking to tell something to attack a structure, it is instead driving to the structure. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Yeah, it's definitely easier to tell them to attack infantry rather than run them over. So if I was playing with regular Dune 2, I wouldn't be splitting the attention of my forces quite so much. Um, but because repairing structures is so much slower in this game, it doesn't matter. Not least because the enemy doesn't appear to repair their structures. Yeah, I'm really not enjoying how much my guys just wander into the uh, into range of rocket turrets, but I guess they did that in the original too, so no different. Uh, kill the rocket launcher. It's a deviator. Okay, I didn't notice any of my units getting deviated then. Not sure if that's... Maybe it's not been implemented, or maybe... Maybe it has been fully implemented and I've been lucky. So... 
the way the deviator is meant to work is if it attacks one of your units successfully, it changes its allegiance to to the autos until that unit is attacked or after like a minute or something. Uh, but when I say successfully, I mean it because there is... I, I think it's like a 90% chance to turn a Harkonnen unit with a Deviator shot, but it's closer to, I think, 40 or 50% with Atreides. I think the, the idea being there that the Atreides are a bit more strong-willed than the Harkonnen. Yeah, the, uh, the graphics for an attack by these troopers needs to be much less impressive. It just doesn't, doesn't fit the scale. Um, because it looks the same size as a regular rocket uh, does. Man, I'm enjoying this though. This is just... It's such a good reproduction that I'm able to just talk and, and play at the same time. Uh, it's so good. And I can tell without having revealed the top left corner of that structure, how much health it still had. So I think with running over units, um, running over infantry, you can if there's just the one. But if you try and tell a, a tank to drive over two infantry in a line, um, that doesn't happen. My units are getting a little down a little. Yeah, okay, so as satisfying as this is to watch, um, it's really fun. I really recommend getting the game. Like, if I tell this guy to move down here, and then there, Yeah, he's just kind of ignoring it. Okay, come down here. So the enemy troopers... Are they troopers? They're heavy troopers. Destroying a structure should spawn soldiers, not troopers. Oh, maybe it's random. This game. It's the last structure. I hope it's the last structure. That was a big base. Cool. Now, now it gets interesting, because that was mission 7, where we get the special units for the first time, and we had Mycelonic tanks against the Auto's Deviators. Deviators didn't seem to do much. Okay. Next up is mission 8. <clears throat> mission 8 is the first time where you fight against two separate houses and one of them gets a palace, so one of them gets the special attack. So for Harkona, that'll be the Death's Hand Missile, for Autos, it's the Saboteur, um, and for Atreides, which I am, and I'll get the Fremen. But... What happens here? Uh, it picks the Harkona map. So, on mission 8, you get two choices. You either fight the Harkonnens, or you fight the Autos. Whichever one you choose, both enemy houses are there, have bases there, but it's the one that you choose that has the palace. This means we're probably going to have to fight against the Harkonnen palace, which is going to mean missiles. And that's going to hurt because, as far as I know, there's no real save. There's no save states. Um, 
Yeah. How do we do this? First up, we're gonna hide. We're gonna- Oh no! Um... Has this given us the hardest level in the game? I think it has. There's one Mission 8 map where you start in the middle and then one base- one enemy base is up here, another is down here. And it is incredibly difficult. Oh look, there's the sandworm. Oh no. This is gonna be torture. Um... Are you able to replay a level if you lose? Yes. There's actually, um... I don't want to go to it now because I'm in the middle of a level, but... You can actually... Just pick what mission to play, 1 to 9. Look at this thing. Unlike in the original, you don't get a warning when it appears, and it can go under rock. It's got... Yeah, right? It is so cool. Um, I haven't fully figured out how it works just yet. It doesn't seem to disappear if it eats three units, which it would in the original game. Or four, which it would in the original version 1.0 of the game. So it is really terrifying to see that, especially this early in a, in a, uh, in a level. Yeah. And this is already a super hard level. See so how we go. I might... I might start building out the here. Yeah, there it goes. We do at least get free harvesters. If one gets eaten. I might put my next refinery over here. Because he's probably just going to get eaten and eaten and eaten. <laughs> okay. So I can place concrete directly underneath units. Unless they're in the top left corner. In which case it selects the unit instead. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to rush the Sonic tanks. Let's ignore the outpost for the moment. Oh no, it only replaces the one harvester. Oh no, we're off to a great start. Oh no, he's up there. Okay. It's only, only the one got eaten. Um... So having placed that, we can now build the starport, we can also build the heavy factory. There's no... the way this game is at the moment, there's no advantage to, to building a starport. It basically operates the same as a heavy factory, except that you can't build a special unit with it. So, I'm gonna ignore that. I would ordinarily place it here. What I will do is place the heavy factory there. Do I place it there or do I put it up the front? I'll put it up the front. And maybe plug that gap with a launcher. Maybe two launchers. Because that way, here I can put two 2x2 two two structures. Uh, 
Um... Right. Why can I not build combat tanks? Do I have to build the outpost first? There's still a few little tweaks uh, to be done with the tech tree, for sure. Because putting down that uh, heavy factory, I should be able to build harvesters and combat tanks straight up. In the original game, I would need to... Yeah, harvesters are completely automatic. I love it. In the original game, I'd be able to upgrade this to build the MCV as well. I actually wanted to build an MCV straight away. Okay, interesting. Alright. Because I'm absolutely terrified of the uh, the Death Sand Missile, I'm going to do exactly what is suggested in the game manual, and build an MCV and go hide it in a corner somewhere. Next up... No wait, we don't need that. Because for some reason we can already build. So these three should only appear as buildable once you've built a light... Oh, I have a light factory. Okay. Disregard, I don't know what I'm talking about. I should put some concrete down first. So I want the high-tech high because I need some carryalls out and about. Because these guys are just going to spend way too long driving around. At the same time... Oh no, there's the first Ornithopter. He just smoothly drove off that. Didn't notice that was a thing. Um... Crap, I need to do a lot of things now. Get that down, get a carryall building. Need to get a House of X going. There's my MCB. Oh, interesting icon. Uh, he can come over there. Actually, because I've got that mostly built, if I now go... I lose the credits. Okay. In the original game, if you have something half built and then go to build something else, you get the credits back. Why am I still part partway through building that? Okay, that's not right. right that's built. Yeah, so that's that's the ornithopter. Um, for some reason, it's it does sometimes target uh, units, as in the original, but it doesn't actually fire on them and damage them, which is weird. Right, we should be building Sonix. We also now need urgently some rocket turrets.
The icon doesn't change when a structure is finished building. Um, I guess out of habit I was watching it just to see when it told me that it was ready, but because my mouse cursor was over it, the, uh, the crosshatch showing where it was going to go wasn't visible. So that was a bit silly of me. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start sort of very offensively patrolling the area down here. No, uh, no, actually. You come back up here, because if we can lure him in range of the rocket turrets. Yes. For some reason, he's now just stuck there and he's gonna die. Dunno. Um, I'm gonna build four of these. And then I'm gonna just keep worrying about what's up here. I think we're gonna have to go attack the Harkonnen base first, because I cannot let that, um, that palace cause issues long term. What is that, Harvester? You've come to the wrong neighborhood, buddy. Turrets down here to protect that. Gonna plop down a second heavy factory just to get more of a uh, production light of sonic tanks coming. Yeah, they're getting they're getting blocked out of the sky. Um, yeah, gonna build another heavy factory, partly, I only built the one carrier, okay. Partly to get more production happening for slotting tanks, and partly because I don't know... What's going on here? I've got one harvester parked, I've got... I don't know what the uh, Harkonnen missile is going to do. And I don't want to look... Okay. Now we know. I guess I'll just build another of those. Yeah, that came from directly north. Does that mean the palace is directly north? Or did it spawn just at the top of the screen? Like the, um, the nuke missile does in Command and Conquer in Red Alert. Let's go looking for it because that's a terrifying thing to leave just hanging. And then I need to think about- you know what? How do I deploy this? Do I click on that? Yes I do. Oh, that's cute. Um... Let's make use of this. Let's... Okay, so that has been put down with half health. I did place it over rubble, so that makes sense. But the rubble in this game currently looks very similar. Oh, that's a devastator. 
That is moving so slowly. Okay, I imagine the Devastator's firing power is massive, but it never got a chance to fire on anything. I'm happy with how that little exchange went. Build me another of those. Yeah, so when I click build on that, it starts at just the one pixel. But when I get that glitch where it builds and then immediately pauses, it's, it's built out to about there. I don't know what the difference is. It doesn't look like damage buildings build any slower. So as long as I know that's going to be the target for the next missile, I don't care about repairing it. Oh, I'm out of money. You, come back please. What about you? You can do the same. Uh... Right, what am I doing? I'm putting more power down so I can actually use my radar. That is a dumb place for you to be harvesting. Oh no. Is he going for that construction yard? Yes. I'm going to need some rocket turrets here as well. I don't have money to repair. Um, I'm going to build two more harvesters. This guy's coming back up here. This guy's going there. I've got to repair him. Right. Let's go hunting. I like these odds. I'm having fun, this is cool. Drive to it. It's a harvester, okay. Yeah, he should have just... Okay, let's, let's go south a bit. I'm gonna get this guy alone to go take care of that. What are you, where are you going? Pathfinding is still a little shaky. Right, now we're at the silo cap. How are we doing down here? There's nothing else that's really being... Oh, that, that's been getting attacked. And some other stuff. So the ornithopters don't seem to attack a single building consistently. Up 
there. I'm gonna lose a bunch of slotting tanks now. Actually, these guys can go attack this, because that's what's going to rip units apart. Yeah, this rocket turret doesn't seem to be doing anything. Ah! Cool. That was really cool to see. And awful. Good screen check telling me something blew up. Can I attack that from there? That's good. Okay, I'm sorry I've gone kind of quiet, but I'm actually just playing the game now. Ah, oh, there it is, there's the palace. Alright, let's keep wiping out these structures. It seems difficult to predict exactly when something is in range of a rocket turret or not. I think that's that's going to be down to the same category of stuff as the pathfinding. In that they're just not detecting properly that they need to attack something. Tanks are kind of struggling against these uh, these troopers. Back a bit. Okay, if you can't have a sound play when you tell something to do something, maybe at least maybe flash the cursor. Give me give me some feedback. We are gonna need some more text up here. I will start building some and hoarding them down here though. Just so that I'm ready to attack the the uh, the autos. Gonna keep whittling away at these buildings.
this guy in here. Get to take out the refinery and then that. Maybe I should build a repair. That's going to become useful. Just because it's quicker. <laughs> oh, that was different. Okay, so it looks like the Death's Head missile is nerfed a bit. So it's able to take out a heavy factory, but it's not able to take out a refinery, because that was a direct hit on the refinery. Who should be able to take care of these last couple of structures. Yeah, let's just get some silos out there. Yeah, and again, the glitch. Um, it built partially paused. Those. This is still building. Yeah, like in the original, once you've got access to Sonic Tanks, there's just no point building much else. going to get absolutely destroyed by this guy. Right, there we go. I can't remember the exact base layout, but that should be the last structure. Didn't quite make it. Gosh, I'm gonna have to stand up for a moment. Devastator, I think he's just going to hang around his base. He's not going to attack. So now... We 
go find the other base. Ouch. So the autos still have launchers, in addition to deviators. That's an interesting development, because in the original game, uh, the deviators replaced rocket launchers for the autos side. So units are, that are very heavily damaged just get picked up and taken home for repair. I wish they would be brought back. There's no way currently to make the game bring them back. Is enemy infantry and stuff? No, it's even spawning troopers in the buildings. Um, they're really causing me an issue. It's actually kind of reminiscent of... Can I not drive through there? I can't. Okay. It reminds me of Command and Conquer, where you can have as big an army of tanks as you like, and they will devastate enemy structures, but one by one they will be whittled down uh, purely because so many infantry spawn in the structures when they're blown up that they just start, you know, hitting your tanks. And that's kind of what's happening here. Okay, so what's happening with the uh, the repairing units. There's like, whichever position that they're in when the game decides that they need to be picked up, that's where the order, that's where the uh, carry-all goes. Even if it's not there anymore. Even if it's already been moved. Why wouldn't you just drive straight at it? So that's a little glitchy, but I completely understand the logic of how it's working inside. Okay, the most effective way to run over the units is to try and attack them, but then have the game misunderstand what you want and assume it and assume that you are telling it to drive there. That's how that's happening. So I've been at this for about three hours. I think I'll, I'll at least start to play Mission 9 and I'll try playing it seriously. I don't know that I'll be able to finish it today. But we'll see. Is that not it? There's another structure somewhere. These guys are angry.
Oh, of course the concrete continues up here. Alright, let's go up here. Hey, I haven't tried building a palace yet. Let's see what the Fremen are like. Can I not build the palace? Um... Obtusely, maybe I need the starport first. Because the palace should be right at the end of this list, and it's not. Yeah, I want to... Before I finish this mission, I want to see what the, uh, the Fremen are like. Look at this poor sad harvester. He's come back to where the refinery would be, and he's just the saddest little creature. Okay, let's pop that down. Can we now build? Unless I'm missing it, it has to be in somewhere else. No. For some reason, it's behind the starport in the tech tree. Now I can buy carryalls at the starport. You should be able to buy them at the starport the moment you have access to the starport. More power. Arrow keys work in this? No, they don't. Because they still move the mouse cursor. I think I will attempt mission 9, I'm, so, I'm already thinking in my head how I'd approach it. I'm really happy with the way that this game works, it's so cool. Um, and even from like the first version, I felt it was reliable and well written enough to, to play right through the end. Um, yeah. So, we place this, we should get the special ability straight away. So... Pick target. Right, so we can place them. No. Okay, so I think the Atreides... I don't think the palace works. Oh well. So I guess that's good to know that we won't need to build it in the next mission, we won't bother. Gosh, where is the rest of this base? Why is it so far away?
is that? Is that also... That is also a launcher. Not a deviator. Come down here and fire at it. Target unit or structure. Even the Atreides one? Okay. Ah. Right, because in the original game, uh, you just click the button on the on the palace, and it just spawns them randomly on the map. Um. Also, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining in. I realize it must be super late over there. Oh, that's uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. My Fremen! Ah. Uh. Well. Guys, back. These two can come over here to take out the refinery. These guys will aim straight at this stuff. Ah, no worries. And I mean, you're totally welcome to interject, this is your game. Um, but yeah. Hopefully there's some useful uh, insights and suggestions in this one today. Uh, can this, can this launcher make up its mind? No, there's another structure. I'm going around, I'm not gonna attack the concrete. Can this guy stop just coming up, firing one shot, and then just disappearing again? That's quite rude. Okay, now that all these guys have been angered, I'm gonna have to take them out. This will be a good test of the pathfinding. What happens when they all go into this one little gap together? Okay. That was better than it could have been. Yeah, that's fine. Like, um... Yeah, like, I'm... I'm not a programmer, really. I have done some programming, but I've never built anything at all like this kind of scale or with this complex a platform. Um, and I don't know the limitations. I don't know 
most things about this platform. This is the first Pico 8 game I've ever played. Um, I didn't know it existed until a month ago. So, yeah. Whatever suggestions I make, just... They're just suggestions. Okay, it goes pink. Well done picking out that detail. And now you get to watch me try and finish Mission 9. Let's go. I mean, okay, so I'm not a programmer, but my day job is uh, I do application support, and a big part of that is writing bug reports and things for the developers. So while I'm not a programmer myself, I do I am very programmer adjacent. So while I know close to nothing about this platform in particular, I do have a fair bit of background in general, I guess. All right. know how to start this mission because the the rock that you get in mission 9 is just so awful all right no worries mate thanks for dropping by thanks for making this i guess um and yeah shoot me a message whenever if you have any questions or thoughts on what i'm doing um I'm very happy to help out. Once I finish this playthrough, um, I don't know that I'll start today, but I'm going to start planning to speedrun the game. Um, and maybe I'll do that next weekend. We'll see. Right, now I know that that noise is the sound of a unit driving into a spice balloon. Useful to know. Right. So that's, um... Gosh. So, we can have an Ornithopter attack fairly quickly. We're gonna build concrete out to the other side. We'll proceed fairly normally here. Concrete to the other side, plop down a refinery. the worm shows up. Good reminder that I'm actually playing Dune and not Command and Conquer. Hey Jove, how's things? Why? What? That's a square of rubble, that shouldn't be there. Yes. Um, I'm doing pretty good. This is a cute little remake of Dune 2, called Undune 2, there's a link on the, the screen you're already watching I guess. Um, what to do next? Okay. 
So something that wouldn't be as practical in the original game is to have a group of units just sort of on this boot, I suppose, um, just kind of defending. I think it's more useful because uh, units are a little better at um, incidental destruction than in this game than in the, the original. Having having it uh, having units up there for now is a good idea. Right, let's. Autopilots aren't going to be too dangerous, so let's rush to. Let's rush to building Sonics and get them popping up. Um, I love them so far. It's becoming a really neat and tidy game. Not that it wasn't before, but it's like particularly, particularly good now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah there's the first one at the That's supremely unwelcome. get two of these down, then we'll go back to Heavy Factory and so on. We are going to have to build two Heavy Factories, because as we saw in the previous mission, the Death's Hand does go for them. And we're going to be up against two Death's Hands. So this is going to be bad. We could end up losing both Heavy Factories in one, in one shot. So, Heavy Factory... Heavy Factory Dad will build two more harvesters. And then. If not for the Sonic tanks, I would just build a starport. Because I can't get Sonic tanks at the starport, but that single thing could give me both Sonic tanks and carryalls. Gonna put one there. No, I don't want another straight away. House of X. To harvest this building. I love how snappy the interface is. It's just. I commented on it a little while ago, but it's just so nice. Just immediately, just click, 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 build. No silly animation. Um, now, the animation would have had a very good use back in 1992 when people weren't really used to this sort of interface just yet. Um, It really provided a good metaphor for scrolling through a list. Uh, that was really crucial back then, I think. Now that you can assume a little bit more about what people are used to and what they'll understand. One of those. Heavy factory. Build another just so that we have that constant stream of money coming in. Yeah, another one that's just started building and pausing. That's that's going on a lot.
I think to speed run this game, I don't know that I would bother with Sonic tanks. I'd probably, especially for this mission, I'd probably just rush to the starport and then use rocket launchers. Just flood the screen, flood the entire map with the rocket launchers. Um, because even though they're a bit random, they do put down a huge amount of damage. Okay. Sonic. Sonic. Concrete. Oh, of course. We can't build the rocket turrets too far away, can we? Otherwise, they just won't defend. Autothopters could stand to do a little more damage. I'm I'm building turrets to defend against them, but I'm not really particularly uh, worried about them. tech. Um, yeah, for the moment I'm not going to worry about a starport, it's just not a useful structure at the moment. I'm not worried about how close these are to everything else, I'm putting spaces in between just so units can come through, that's basically it. Um, I'm not worried about damage from the missiles because they seem very targeted. It seems very accurate, goes to a particular structure. Um, so yeah, not a concern. Right. Aerial straight away. CV we may as well just deploy straight away. Uh, where could it go? I'll pop it not too far away. Just so that I can defend it more easily when it gets attacked. Okay, can I pop down a third heavy vehicle factory? This is pretty overkill, but I am facing two Harkonnen missiles. And even if they get two perfect strikes, I want to keep being able to build Sonic tanks. Or if they take out both construction yards, um, I need to be able to build an MCB very quickly. In fact, I might just build a spare one. Why not? You deploy. I love the little puff of smoke. That's such a cute little detail. How am I doing for power? I haven't thought about that in a while. Pretty good. Gonna start getting some silos together down here. Aerial, build please. Oh, it already built one. Cool. That's interesting. It won't let me build over a carryall. And that was me right clicking because I'm a fool. Right. Missile proof. In my mind. 
Oh, I'm out of money. That sucks. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that you can do faster in Undune 2 than in regular Dune 2. Just, I've, I've mentioned the interface stuff before. Um, just telling a harvester. I mean, I guess that's a little slower because in the original you just you just click on it and press R. But it's still there's a lot. Maybe it's just the interface being so smooth. I guess. I want... Maybe I want one more harvester. I, okay, I've already hit the unit cap. Alright, time to go. That was a Harkonnen Ornithopter. That shouldn't be the case. I'm pretty sure that was Dark Red. Um, they should not... Okay, Harkonnens don't get Ornithopters. There's the first missile. And went out for my light factory. And I can't even rebuild it straight away. What am I missing? Oh no, I can't. <laughs> I might have been playing this a little too long today. Yeah, okay, so the Harkonnens have definitely just discovered me. And even though that looked like a pretty wide blast radius, I think it only damaged the one structure. So let's just keep an eye on stuff and just... I don't know why I can build a, a, a carry-all now. I thought I was at the unit cap. Well, hopefully there's no structure cap because that is really the killer for this mission in particular. MCV, I'm going to move this guy over here. We don't take too kindly to your kind of around here. Okay. Now, something that I bet hasn't really been replicated for this mission in particular is the layout of some of these structures. So we're going to bring this quad all the way up here. I bet he's going to run into a block of four rocket turrets. Yes. Those should not be there. Those appear in the Harkonnen mission. Mission 9, not the Atreides one. Interesting that two of them are autos and two of them are slider car. That's interesting. Alright. Yeah, so for the uh, Harkonnen Mission 9, there's absolutely extra turrets up there defending. Um, on the basis that you're going to be stronger anyway because you've got Devastators. Alright, let's do this. So rocket turrets are turning around because they can... Oh god, what was that? One of my silos. Okay. Right. We'll go after the left one first. Then right, then left, then right.
Cool. Let's just storm the palace straight up. Um, I feel safe doing this because the AI doesn't yet rebuild structures. Yikes. I want to see how much damage it puts out. Not much! Holy crap, it's got a ton of hit points though. Is that another of my structures? Yeah, I think with a lot of stuff happening on screen, the turrets just kind of forget that they are turrets. Oh. I should be bringing more Sonic tanks up here. Build. 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 And you... Start moving. Ah, uh, what to do next? Let's just keep clearing our turrets. To remember that if you right click and hold, can you move please? Okay, in this mission, pathfinding is really struggling. I'm just gonna have to build up a little bit of an army here as like a staging point. Unit cap. Alright, let's bring the sieges into this. If we can. I can't tell stuff to move more than a few squares away. Yep. It's really struggling now. Are those units stacked? Okay, so units are piling up here as well. Okay. Oh man, this... I think is there's so much going on. I'm having trouble telling things to do things. Barely tell these guys to get away. Okay, it's hard to get them to move. But I can target. Can you now attack that? Yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's go on a scouting mission with this one. Was something crucial. Yep. That post. Can I start building more things? Okay, palace will go down in due time. Guys are still. Yeah, oh, we got some good movement here. Yeah, I think if the game gets to a point where if you have to give too many things commands at once, the pathfinding really breaks down and suddenly you only accepts like moving a couple of squares in a straight line. Okay, let's run up here. Let's run. Yep, they're just stuck. Now that's dying. Outposts. We're missing some power too now. From where? Oh, that was power. The. Oh. Okay. Okay, I don't know that I'm going to be able to finish this. Because it's just breaking down so much. Um, I can't save and resume in a mission. Nothing is happening. Even this carryall is stuck. Yep, yeah, okay. Traps are at absolute parity. There we go. Okay. I think the game has just died. Units aren't moving. Harvesters are glitching in and out. Carryalls are frozen in the air. I can't even move stuff from one square. Um, I might have to call it for the day. I placed that, does that change anything? No. Yep. I'm gonna have to call it for the day. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I guess next weekend I'll try and do this. I might. No, it is, it is Sunday today, isn't it? Yep. So I might do some more of this. I might try Mission 9 again next week. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then after that, I'll try some speedrun stuff. I might do some streams during the week as well. Um, there's a lovely old puzzle game that I want to try playing a little bit of. So hopefully I get time for that. Um, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. And... Um, subscribe on Twitch so you'll get notice notifications when I go live. Um, add me on Twitter. I'm getting more and more active on Twitter as well. Um, and I do a few different updates. So I've got some big projects in the works coming soon. Um, and the first you'll hear about those is on Twitter. So please follow me there as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.